knocking bills out like crazy. Okay, so we started having brainstorms about using some CARES money to cover individuals with hardships in paying their property taxes. And you were going to look into that. Yes. So. So um, I, I probably should have sent you the document, but in the um, Corona uh, Virus Relief Fund Frequently Asked Questions, updated as of May 4th, I took a look in there and I'll just read you this provision, this first one that looked promising. And it said, uh, may, may recipients use fund payments to provide emergency financial assistance to individuals and families directly impacted by a loss of income due to the COVID-19 public health emergency. The kind of thing we were talking about um, when mm -hmm. I last testified. And the answer to that is yes, if a government determines the assistance to be a necessary expenditure, and it may include um, assistance to individuals with overdue rent or mortgage payments to avoid eviction or foreclosure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, it, to, the, to the extent administratively, administratively feasible, it needs to be uh, necessary oh. assistance. However, although that sounds promising, further down mm -hmm. on the same page in this document, it says, may fund payments be used to assist impacted property owners with the payment of their property taxes. The answer is fund payments may not be used for government revenue replacement, including the provision of assistance to meet tax obligations. So the distinction is that yes, you can use this money to help individuals that have been adversely affected, but you cannot use it to help them pay for their property taxes. Okay, so if I get evicted, I'm homeless. If I don't pay my property taxes, my home goes up for tax sale and I'm homeless. But yeah, all right, and yes, I can yes. use it to pay my mortgage, but not. Okay. Uh, yeah, and you know we. Sorry. Well, Senator Pearson. Nobody's got a property tax bill or a school tax bill to right now, mm -hmm. um, because we haven't figured out what the rate is. So I'm I'm wondering if that provides. Um, some opportunity to um, for a workaround that that would allow us to provide some relief, but just keep it out of the tax bills or the tax sphere. Uh -huh. So um, Ways and Means has been we're working on this for like the last month to try to find a way to make this work, and yeah. the, the one thing we're working on right now that it, it's it's not a elegant solution at all, but um, it would appropriate um, some COVID, some of the $1.25 billion in COVID money into a, into a separate fund and school districts would be able to apply to the Agency of Education for a portion of those funds for any costs that they can identify as meeting the criteria. And in fact, right now on um, the school superintendents is working with seven superintendents to try to identify some of those costs in their own budgets. I think we're going to hear back from them next week. But um, to be honest with you, we've gone over these guidelines, you know, with a fine tooth column and it's they're they're written pretty tightly. It's pretty difficult to find a way um, to get around them. They seem to be limited to expenditures that are directly related to COVID-19 that were not anticipated and pr prior to the outbreak. And it specifically prohibits them to, to backfill any um, revenue that, that we've lost as a result of the, the, the outbreak. And the problem we're really having is a shortage of revenues, not so much COVID-19. Right, not the added expense. Yeah. Um, Unless we could build the whole first quarter of the year to remedial caused by COVID expense. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> fill a quarter of our bill, but it really is loss of sales tax revenue. Yeah, that's what we've lost so far. We haven't. We're assuming we're going to get the property tax revenue. Yeah, and so if we it, don't, it's just going to further dig the hole. I right. think what the house, as of this morning, um, is thinking about is just passing a tax rate based on the budgets that were passed 
not dealing with the deficit at this moment, just a tax rate to fill your budget and assume that the normal revenues are there and then kicking the deficit down the road, um, pretty much the same thing we're doing with the budget until we find out how DC is going to deal with this. It is getting closer to an election and I would assume that probably 40 plus states are in the same or worse circumstances than we are and it is an election year. So that might move. The president says we're open and everything is fine and he doesn't see any need for any more aid, but that could change. Um, I know there is a bill in the house, but that doesn't sound like it's revenue replacement either. Do you know, Mark? Um, I, I don't know about COVID-4. I, I don't know how much money there is for state and local government in there, but um, I do know that Treasury Secretary Mnuchin was quoted as saying that they may be willing to consider more flexibility for state and local governments for the money that we already have received. In other words, not getting new money to address these things, but saying out of that 1.25 billion that we already have, we're gonna loosen it up a little bit so that you may be able to use it for some of these other needs that you've identified that don't meet the guidelines right now. And I think that's the hope. And the way you characterized what Ways and Means is doing, I think is exactly right there. They're, going to, I think, going to set the property tax rates where they would have been prior to the outbreak, which is slightly lower than where they were uh, on December 1st, and then allow that allow that to flow through. It doesn't, it doesn't cover all of the spending that we need to cover in FY21, but it leaves the question as to how we'll fill that gap to down the line with the idea that, you know, by, the, by later on this year, we're going to have a much better idea. First of all, we'll know whether we're getting any more money or if it's going to be any more flexible. And we'll, we'll also have a, a better idea about, um, you know, what's, what's, what, what, how fast we're coming out of this and what, okay. you know, what we're doing. So they will put the surplus, they'll keep the reserve and just put the $12 million surplus into this year's tax yeah, rate? No, yeah, I'm not talking about FY, I'm not talking about FY20. FY20 is a separate issue. That's yes. pretty much covered. If they do have right. additional costs that they did not budget in FY20, okay, that so it's fairly next eligible. All right. That'll be that'll be CRF eligible. The problem All is right. in FY21, we already have budgets and trying yeah. to identify money in those existing budgets that meet these guidelines is difficult. If they have additional costs on top of what they would normally have, right. that will be CRF eligible as well. Yes. That and that helps the districts, but it doesn't solve the problem of the gap in the education fund that's based on money that was already budgeted. Okay, so we aren't making a whole lot of progress. Senator Pearson. Um, well, it's my observation that the right wing running Washington does not believe in government. So I, I think it's very foolhardy, foolhardy to think that they are suddenly going to let us spend this money on the government. There's been a persistent hope uh, for the last month and and I've yet to really hear anything that should give us confidence. And I really, I'm very concerned that we're setting ourselves up to inflict significant pain on our schools in August. So that we're, if we're, if we're going to punt this question, we're, we're leaving the decision to the opening weeks of the school year when, uh, when we're going to be, very pressed to finish our work and adjourn for the year. Um, so uh, if it's just me, I'll, I, I'll, I'll take my complaint elsewhere, but I, I, I think we're, um, we would be better off to per perhaps have some contingency plans. If the federal government loosens the restrictions, that will be very easy. Mm -hmm. And if not, the decisions will be very hard. And I think we should, get to them sooner than later myself i i think we probably i know the house has had some minor discussions about raising revenue mm -hmm. but we might i mean we can cut 
we can raise revenue or we can go into debt. I mean, those are the three solutions we've got. Um, it's going to be difficult to cut when schools are in fact seeing more expenses and net, I suppose next year, any additional expense, but you know, we, if there's no more money coming, we've got a really, I mean, 1.25 billion sounds like a lot of money, but it's getting spent very quickly. And if you're talking about air exchangers in schools and remedial classes and extra teachers and supplying safety gear and all of those other things, um, there's going to be a lot of that. A lot's going to get tapped in that in that reserve. So. I'm going to just address um, Senator Pearson's question. Um, yeah. So um, I think the way the bill is going to be coming out of House Ways and Means, it does not rely exclusively on being able to use this federal money. It leaves open the possibility of all the options that um, the chair just went through, borrowing money, raising revenues, um, moving money from other places. So it doesn't preclude any solution. It's just saying at this point in time, we need to move a tax rate to get that machinery going and we're gonna come back and we're going to address this problem. So we're not in, in this, you know, so schools are able to continue to function through the year. But yeah. you know, I take your point that it's, it's, it's risky not knowing where you're gonna go at this point. And it's not, well, I mean, I can't imagine the circumstances in which the federal government gives us and mind all the states enough money to cover all of our deficits so we're going but i do get a little worried saying well we're not going to deal with the deficit but we've got to pay the bills we can't print money um so it i would assume we're going to have some mixture of all three mm -hmm. um and senator mcdonald <clears throat> The bill we're discussing that's coming from the House, this addresses just the school issue. Is that the question? Is that it, the case? It sets the tax. It's the yield bill. Okay, that's okay. sometimes it, it gets wasn't a greater out, discussion. But it's separate Thank you. for miscellaneous tax. I think miscellaneous tax is on its way to us. Um, so when do it, it, it's pretty sparse this year? We're not going to get to decorate it. So, Madam Chair, while we are discussing sort of the federal government and the role and the interplay, um, when do will we ask ourselves questions about what we in finance can do now? Um, for example, the transportation fund, which is, um, you know, could we put a tax on gasoline, a surcharge on gasoline until um, we get the amount of money we would have gotten uh, before COVID, or the price of gasoline goes back to $2.50 a gallon and begin to recoup some of our, and raise some money for the, from the few people that are driving and currently employed so that we don't fall farther behind. Or when do we get a chance to discuss those sorts of things, which is probably not now. Uh, that's going to be probably what we're going to do for the next few weeks because we're going to need, uh, we're going to need to have some fallback and some, if we get back here in September and we're running $150 million in deficit in the Ed Fund, I am not sure how we're going to make payroll or make that December transfer to the schools. So, uh, so if the decision on schools is gonna be put off for several weeks, are we going to continue not to address things that we could do now and perhaps should have done? No, we are ago? not, Senator. We're not gonna do that, okay. We're going to start working. We've been looking, um, we just have, a larger 
scope of responsibility than the Ways and Means Committee and tax bills are supposed to start revenue bills in the House. So we usually let them take the lead. Mm -hmm. Once we see where they're going, we're usually prepared when their bill comes over. We got uh, the T bill yet? I, we, don't, we don't get the T bill, so I don't know. Usually do. I know miscellaneous tax has been voted out and is heading our way. Yeah. I think it may be waiting floor action, but it is pretty sparse. Yeah. Um, and then the yield bill will probably be, I know they've looked at a surcharge on the sales tax, which is the money that's dedicated to um, the ed fund if we did a sales tax we could it has been and we have a bill for sugary beverages and candy um sitting on our wall we could use that as a vehicle if we want to um start talking about raising some revenue so we're, we're, we're reported to be 180 million behind short in revenues in the three major funds. And just as, I, just as one senator, it seems the simplest and more straightforward and timely one is to start replenishing some of our losses in the transportation fund as long and they don't, because they would have pretty much fall on those people that were still working and, and in good shape. But, well, so. let's hold, I think we'll be told that in a couple of weeks, most people will be working, but they may be well, working from home. Um, it's, it's but the driving, transportation huh? fund is not my problem. So uh, I think we can start thinking about revenues I think the last resort is to bond is to borrow, which is some form of bonding. Um, we know that running, we could have a plan for paying down. If it looks like everything's coming back and the revenues are there and we're not in the middle of a major recession, we could have a plan for paying off the deficit over the next three years or whatever. Um, the other player in this is the treasurer and our bond rating. Um, I suppose worse things could happen than going down a little bit in that, but that does cost every municipal fund and project significantly more money once it's played out over a 20 year bond. So, um, Senator Sorotkin. I asked Mark a question. Uh, Mark, you, I, I was confused by what you said the House was doing. It sounds like they're either kicking the can down the road um, or they're leaving open all possibilities and not making a decision now, which I guess is not in the can, can down the road. But does that mean that they've made the decision that increases to the property tax is unacceptable that one way or another they're going to find a way to keep the property taxes down level well, in, yeah in, in the bill that they that they the draft of the bill they have right now property taxes do go up on average by a little over three cents that's okay. a little bit less than was projected back in december but they do go up by about three cents but yes they are sort of drawing a line there and saying that we want the property tax rates to be where they were would have been prior to COVID-19, and we want to solve the problem of the deficit in the fund some other way. So it turns the normal process on its head a little bit. You're right, because normally we, we do an education fund outlook that has everything in there but the tax rates, and then the tax rates are adjusted up and down until the fund is balanced and the reserve is full. This approach is saying we're going to set the tax rate first, and then we're going to make the fund whole some other way, either with federal money some new revenue sources that the state can raise or some other method. So I know this is not for you to answer, but it seems inconsistent with everything we're doing here 
in terms of prioritizing one spending program over every other one before we know where the dust settles. Well, I don't know that, I think I mean, they, I don't know that anyone's arguing that we don't have to open school. Um, and well, we no, have to open, we have to, we have to provide education for the kids. That, that That's the constitution. I understand that, but yeah. we're, we're favoring potentially raising one tax over another without having all, we're setting up in a preferential state, the property tax. We're saying, okay, you're going to stay, we're going to hold you harmless or we're going to raise you. No, we are Three cents or 3% or whatever. We're setting that and that could lead to income taxes rates to pay for that or sales tax rates to pay for that uh, where we've, we've set that one first in their bill anyhow. Okay, this would be, there's thinking in the other body that a, the schools did a 4% increase. So they're gonna get a three cent tax increase. That There's a thing that you should see what your vote did rather than have it hidden in the revenue loss 17 cents. And that's, they've been talking about this for a while that the three cents you voted for, you can't blame this on the virus. <laughs> this is yours. The deficit is caused by lost revenue. They're just raising the property tax to cover the budgets that people voted. How we deal and whose lost revenue gets dealt with first is still up in the air. No, we're just starting to be able to focus and the administration is just starting to be able to focus on what, I mean, the, the solution and actually the house talked a little bit about a surcharge on the sales tax to make up revenue. And that finally got a response and that was, well, we'll just revote the school budgets, but they'd have to reduce 10%. And I don't think it, anyone sees that as any more viable than a 17 cent property tax increase. So Madam Chair. Yes. The, um, what is the task that we're being asked to perform in the face of, we've got three funds that are short and what are we being asked to do? Um, or, and what is appropriations being asked to do and will there be will we solve half of this with revenues and half with cuts um what are we being asked to do okay and it depends i mean i was at the initial discussion on the budget this morning and the first question is they're doing it they're doing essentially what this is they're doing a three or four they're doing a one quarter skinny budget until we get a better lay of the land. We have had all sales tax payments put off until July. So we don't even know what's like, and rooms and meals, what may or may not get paid in. So we don't have that. We're at, we need to provide enough money to get school open. That's one of our tasks is to yeah. find a money source to get school open. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, the Ed Fund is short because of people not buying stuff and paying sales tax. Right. I'm not. I'm not going to suggest that should the economy turn around and everything be hunky dory again, that Vermonters are going to rush out and buy all the things they didn't buy in May and June and July and August. Right. And um, whatever. But Vermonters, um, I'm. Forgive me if you're going back to transportation, which seems relatively simple, that with the gas lien as low as it is, mm -hmm. um, why are we not collecting a surcharge now when gasoline is a bargain from people who are driving? Um, and most of the people who are driving are employed and they're driving 
cheaper today. Um, those are the people who would pay a gas tax. Why are we not collecting that now and putting one of our problems, sort of having a solution in place while we work about the others that we don't plan to solve okay. right well, away? Well, I would suggest you ask leadership that. Well, could or we the ask transportation that committee. Or maybe we committee? like to take that money and put it towards education. We used to get part of the gas tax. I was, um, I was doing suggesting something simple and less controversial. It is never simple, um, except raising the. I mean, we normally what we would do if re revenues went down, we would raise the property tax. But I don't think anyone thinks. I mean, five minutes ago we were worried about people who couldn't pay their present property tax without raising it 17 cents. And we know there will be people for which paying that property tax will be painful, if not impossible. Agreed. There are people for whom paying property tax was very painful before this. And that's why there's Agreed. been such a focus on it. So in this and it will take a it will take a while to work out those complicated things. And my, I, that's, if the answer to the question is we're not dealing with transportation, which is simple and we can do now because we haven't been asked, then I'll accept that answer. And maybe we'll ask leadership if that's something that would be productive and we could help out with. Yeah. Okay, but right now. Um, Thank you. I, uh, we, we need to start figuring it out and it, the budget is equally kind of nebulous at this point. Um, how much do we cut in that first quarter? Where do we cut it? I think the uh, governor has proposed like two cents across the board, yeah, but the men, the, um, Somebody told the uh, mental health agencies, the designated agencies to budget based on a 23% cut. Um, when we know that there's gonna be an increased demand, the schools know, and the schools generally contract with those agencies, that there's going to be an increased demand for remedial support and you know, some of these kids have been locked up in some pretty rough situations. Um, others have just been bored out of their minds, but uh, we know that there's going to be increased demand. Um, humans are not, they're herd animals. They don't like being isolated and uh, we're going to have we're going to have some issues. So do we want to cut those agencies now? And who do we cut? And especially before we know the entire federal action. So right now we're, I think, treading water until we get the final lay of the land. Senator Pearson. Um. And to use your metaphor, I think we're treading water because we don't like the answers the feds have given us. Right. And hope, hope they will change. Mm -hmm. There's there's really no reason, I think, to wait just with this hope. I think we should plan. Yeah. yeah. And unlike the state government, the schools are going to really struggle if we force them to make adjustments in the middle of the year, say the Christmas break or something. It's easy enough for us to make alterations to the state budget after the first quarter. I think a school is more unique in that it sets itself up for a school year. Right. Um, so maybe it would make sense for us to plot out a list of questions that we would like to ask leadership or on all Senate call 
okay. to try to get some direction from our colleagues of what they'd like us to do. I, I, I remain quite concerned that we would punt this question, particularly with schools, for much longer because uh, yeah, they need certainty. They need yes. certainty, and it's not going to be easy. And we would do well not to put off those hard questions. I think. I think, Mark, and you may know if not, I, but I believe the law, Act 60, requires that the state remit to the schools the amount of money that the schools voted. Um, I don't think so. Because, you know. no, and because part of, the, part of the solution that the House is looking at is to reduce the education payment to districts and then allow them to backfill that reduction with federal aid or some other oh, sort of federal aid. aid. Yeah, but I, I, I do think that, I mean, it would be very difficult to reduce education spending at this point, even if you could wave a magic right. wand because you've got contracts are already in place. Um, it's late to be ripping teachers. Yeah. Um, you know, for all those reasons, it's, it would be very difficult for them. The administration's proposal to revote budgets, you know, was problematic in that way in that um, even if they had a chance to revisit their budgets, they're locked into about 80% of their spending right now anyways, so. Yeah, I, and. Madam Chair? Yes. I may just add, so some of this might come up at our four o'clock meeting, uh, you know, the COVID-19 transition group is meeting and the whole Senate is meeting, or has the opportunity to meet with the administration. So some of this may come up. Is it a whole Senate meeting or just an invitation? Oh no, it's just an invitation to the whole Senate. It's not, um, it's not by any means uh, required. Everybody has a Zoom, has Zoom information sent to them. Yeah. They want to Are you going to be talking about education? It's the administration, you know, it's a good question. I don't believe I saw Secretary French's- uh, don't, don't, don't bother with Secretary. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't see him uh, listed, uh, yeah. but, uh, you know, the financial piece may come up in a report. Okay. Because they, yeah, they, they really don't have any idea what to do with this one either. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this is, but I think we all know that, yes, we have to come up with a significant amount of money that schools need that surety. Um, and You well, know, normally we would just raise the property tax to, to get to the amount that uh, the schools needed. But this year, year, it's too much. So we need to enhance the revenues. We may need to borrow, which is, it has issues. Um, but I think we need to be thinking about ways we can. I don't think anyone is talking about telling the schools you've got to cut 20% midstream. I think we know that we're making a commitment to paying the cost, at least the cost that they voted. And that if there are additional costs covering those with some one of the CARES money, they are getting $27 million directly and then I know Senator Hardy is looking at a plan. I know the uh, Ways and Means has looked at it in some way, cutting the amount, the budgets in the sense that um, the amount of state dollars that go in and then trying to find an equitable way to backfill with COVID, but what's not at all clear now is that the schools have enough COVID related expense to make any real difference. And there's several school, the school superintendents are working on it. Right. Yeah. Right, and the administration has proposed hiring a consultant that presumably would help with that as well in terms of identifying right. the COVID-19 related costs, so helping us set it up and make sure that when we do things, it will pass muster and it won't get clawed back next year. Um, I think our one hope at the federal level is that, 
we're in good shape compared to other states. Um, at least if you believe Moody's, uh, that we are not, it's not just the little blue states that are in trouble. There are some big red states that are in worse trouble. There are swing states that are in very big trouble. Um, and so there will be some pressure on Washington to help those states because they're all in equal or worse shape than we are. Some states have no reserves. I think Indiana was one, has no reserves. So, um, Ma Madam Chair. Yeah. Senator Hardy's got working on something. <laughs> yeah. House Ways and Means is working on something. The administration yeah. is working on something. May yeah, I suggest are. that we would work on something. Yes. We are the revenue committee for the Senate and we ought to try to come up with some ideas so that we're not just reacting to other ideas that people are bringing forward. Right. So I think I will see if anyone here can come up with a different idea. We can ask other people to come in and tell us what they're looking at. Um, that actually is kind of, that might be a, an interesting way to start some of it, uh, having Senator Hardy and others come in, um, as well as, I think Senator Pearson makes a good point, we can also all come back uh, with our own ideas uh, even before that, if that makes sense. Um, in terms okay. Of well, we you know, know the Senate has a revenue committee. We don't have a savings committee. No. I've listened to this entire discussion and it's all about increasing revenues, increasing taxes, increasing, finding another source of money. And we're not talking in the least. Nobody ever seems to talk about how we can reduce the amount of spending we have, how we can reduce costs, how we can make government more efficient and work better, and how we can do it by spend, with spending less money uh, at the same time. And we don't spend any time doing that. And we should. Okay, I think that frequently goes to appropriations, but I think if you can help us put something together there where we could save some money. Um, I have a stack of ideas, Madam Chair. Okay, well, bring them in on Tuesday and we'll take a look um, and we'll do some money savings. We'll do some possible revenue. I am starting to get emails on tax the billionaires. So I intend to have a little email with the um, tax commissioner because I'm not even sure we have a billionaire in this state. And if we do, they probably aren't drawing down a billion dollars in income um, that we can tax. So, but that will, that will most certainly, it's, it's comes up every time and the question is, if we did some broad-based revenue enhancement, where would that fall? If we'd done the Green New Deal, we probably would have been taxing the doctors and nurses filing jointly that were working overtime this year. So I'm kind of glad we didn't do that because, but um, that's that one is out there. Um, <clears throat> there may be some elasticity at the top. I We don't know right now. Um, because it's, it's too soon. There's a lot, probably fewer wealthier people now than there were six months ago. But we don't know the extent of that. I don't know that the tax department does. So I will send you home to think, and then perhaps we will just book. Faith, what have we got on Tuesday? Right now, Tuesday is completely open. I was imagining it, that you might want to take testimony on S-227. Let's do, that probably won't be too short. Let's, yeah, let's do, 
maybe an hour on 227 and then leave the rest of the day for committee discussion on property taxes. And I'm not sure. We've had the treasurer in, but we've got to find, Senator Brock is gonna help us think through some savings ideas. We're going to think through some revenue enhancement and maybe just between us, we can go come up with a list of possible revenue enhancements. Uh, last time we had a major downturn, there were, and before that, there have been surcharges on the income tax or in certain sections of the income tax. Uh, we would have to look at the sales tax or find a new source of revenue so we aren't stealing it from the general fund. Um, so we might be able to find other things to put a sales tax on. It would be nice if we could have taxed marijuana. I do have a taxing um, COVID. No, what? Cannabis, got it. Um, if we, um, I've got a, tax on hemp cigarettes bill floating around um, that we might use as a vehicle. But um, just in all your leisure time this weekend, think of things you could tax and things we could cut. And then we'll ask the treasurer about how much can we borrow? Senator Ballot. Well, I just, I just want to be really clear that the numbers that we're looking at in these three funds are incredible. They're enormous. Mm -hmm. We cannot cut our way no, out of this mess. It's gonna be a yes and. It's gonna be a trying to find ways that we can tighten the belt, mm -hmm. but it's also gonna be trying to find revenue so that yep. Vermonters have the programs that they rely on to have a safety net. And so I just, with all due respect, Senator Brock, I don't feel like anyone here is saying that we're not interested in saving money for Vermonters, but we're looking at a massive hit to these funds, the likes of that we've not seen since the Great Depression. And I think we need to get really clear on that. This is I think nothing- I clear on that. that. I think that, and I agree with you that that is important, but I also agree that if the discussion, which it has been in this committee this afternoon, is solely about raising revenue, it's missing the boat. We have to control our spending. That's appropriations job, Mr. Senator Brock. Well, we raise all of our jobs. Yeah. Yeah. It's all we of can, our jobs. We can have the discussion. If we can come up with ways that we think we can save, then we can say, all right, we can send that over to a probes and say, look, if you do this, this, and this, then we only have to raise that. It may, and that probably would work better when we were looking at a two or three cent tax increase than a 17 cent tax increase. What I told the administration is just what Sandra Ballard just said, this is what the numbers are and we are not going to tax or spend our way out of it. So all ends of the political spectrum, we're all together because we're not going to, you know, be able to raise enough taxes and we're not going to be able to cut enough to do the 150, 160, I don't know where the number is today. More than that. Yeah, so we're gonna have to, but we do have to provide education <laughs> to the kids and we don't know if, if school's going to open, that's the intent, but we don't know if school's going to stay open. Um, we just so, don't know at this point. They may all get sent home again. Well, Madam Chair, an yes. interesting exercise would be that it's an exercise is that we've got $180 million short, that we come up with 90 million of revenues, and then we'd come up with 90 million of savings and cuts as a starting point. 
but we got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere. Um, and, okay. And we're we're not doing that um, in the places that would be easier and don't take a lot of time to get started. Um, while we wrestle with the the more difficult ones, I, will take I more don't time. know but, that the easier ones are not in process because okay. none of us are on that committee. On transportation? Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't know that they aren't in process. Thank you. Um, but I think we do need to, you know, and, and this is one reason I don't want to do any tax credits or anything else until we have been through every cent that we can find um, in any place there's any elasticity in the structure in the you know in the system to hit and in the meantime we can hope the federal government sees the light well, thank okay you. good so some some of us will be there at four in 15 minutes okay I'm going to jump off soon so I can. Yes, no, I think yeah. that's it. Don't jump. Don't jump. Don't Are we jump. Not? not yet. It's not, not that bad. Yet. <laughs> I thought we had, we were voting on a bill, no? Yes, you are. We, we are voting. Oh, what are we voting on? I lost my agenda again. S233. S. Oh, 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 yes, we are. Okay, that's right. This was only supposed to take us up till four. So is our Betsy Ann and Lauren here? No, they Betsy not Ann is not free until four, but I just wrote her and said to join us as soon as she's free. Okay. Yeah, is Lauren here? I know we sent them off to think about, um, the liability if they told they did one of those pre yeah you can get your license if you got convicted of cannabis possession in college and now you want to be an accountant and so I go through accounting school and come back for my license and they say oh we changed the standard and you're no longer eligible for a license um, and you say, I'm, you know, $100,000 in debt getting my degree and you owe me. And we, I think, sent them out to figure out if they wanted to put anything in here. And they are not with us. We've got about 10 minutes. You want to take a 10 minute break?